Hey everyone, it's been quite some time since I reduced James Tour to a shrieking maniac by exposing his lies about origin of life research in front of a live audience. Mr. Farina! He kept quiet for a few months after that, but recently he's been opening his mouth again to try and save some face. If you're tired of the drama, maybe skip this one. But if you're curious to see just how low James has sunk, let's go through some of his most recent shenanigans, shall we? If you missed our debate on whether humans are clueless about the origin of life, definitely give that a watch before continuing, as nothing here will make sense without that context. It's linked below, along with my video illuminating the laundry list of infantile tactics he employed. If you're up to speed, you will recall that he spent the entire exchange either playing with chalk for no reason, screeching at the top of his lungs, or flat out saying nah-uh to any research that proves him wrong. Discovery Institute likely had more than a few roundtable discussions to figure out how to best spin it for damage control, which first consisted of endless blog posts mischaracterizing every last detail of what happened. But it eventually came time for James to speak up once again. How did he break the silence? Did the scientific community rally with him in solidarity? Did he post some interviews with top scientific minds who confirmed everything he said in the debate? Even better, he published an appearance on the prestigious Demystify Psy podcast. These guys are the real deal. I mean, truly cutting edge stuff. They talk about UFOs, electric universe, alchemy, biofields, ancient aliens, structured water. This is Nobel level science. James clearly knows the caliber of scientist he now deserves to be associating with. Anyway, it's not worth combing through this whole conversation, but there are some fun moments where this woman is rambling cluelessly and James is visibly irritated at having to deal with it. Okay, so check it out. I don't think that life is an object. I think that life is a state of matter. And I think that when you start thinking about life as a state of matter, then these questions start to become slightly clearer. And I think that we can't possibly get to the origin of life until we start thinking about what is life in a way that doesn't just describe what a cell does. And I think that this high entropy environment, which is inside the cell, because you say that and I'm very, like- Very, very low entropy. Sorry, low entropy, I'm sorry. Then what we are is a progressively more complex crystal that probably is still being formed in the rock of the earth today. Like that stuff is probably still happening. If it, if it is happening, if it's possible for it to happen, you could go into the rocks and you could still find it happening. And it is... This doesn't just happen. It doesn't just happen this way. And then you I withdraw think, in I... horror because you realize that the trains are falling apart and they're still using 100-year-old switches yeah. with yeah. vacuum tubes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, a, that's another topic. I also found it hilarious when they pressed James on why a literal interpretation of scripture means so much to him, and he goes into angry preacher mode where the reality of the resurrection and the figure of Jesus in and of themselves is the key. And I've always wondered why that is so, because the story seems so obviously relevant and true without that. There is a lordship. There's a lordship that I am bowing my knee to somebody who is real. This is not some fiction. This is somebody who is real, who takes a deep interest in my life, enough to die on the cross for me. This happened. Apart from his standard script of lies, James also had two particularly ridiculous moments. The first was where he talks about how Stephen Benner and Lee Cronin are such super nice, awesome guys. I find Steve Benner to be a wonderful guy. I really do. And I find, I find Lee Cronin to be very nice. I guess that's why he makes hours of content mocking them, lying about their research to denigrate them, and even dressing them up in little costumes, huh? Lee, nobody cares. BFFs forever, eh, James? This is just like when he pretended to commend me on my fantastic chemistry tutorials after spending two years telling everyone I don't understand chemistry. Then there was the moment where he whines about how the lying scientists are the reason everyone thinks we have already made a cell, which is a shame because that's why no students go into the field. Two ter thirds of the general population feel, thinks that scientists have already made living cells because of the nonsense that they spew out there. And what it does is it causes young people to not want to go in the field because they think it's already been solved. Of course, in reality, we all remember that James is the one pleading with young minds to avoid this entire field like the plague. Why, why would I do this? Why would I do this and, and, and discourage students from going into the laboratories of certain people? Well, in my job, part of what I do is I work with graduate students and I keep them from going down rat holes or they will spend a year working on nonsense if I didn't redirect them. 
Delusional narcissists like James contradict themselves constantly because everything out of their mouths serves only to manipulate, never to genuinely convey facts. At any rate, after that, a series of interviews with Stephen Meyer were published. These were actually filmed in November of last year and consist of James summarizing point for point the script of lies contained in his second pathetic series, which was released shortly after these conversations were recorded. The one where he goes after my experts and throws tantrums while showing cartoons. Most of you will recall that I immediately made a four-part response to that series before he was even finished releasing it, which was so jarring for him that he didn't even publish the last video, which was supposed to be about Jack Shostak. He just stopped. But here is Stephen Meyer publishing these interviews now as though they are currently relevant, knowing his idiot followers didn't watch my content and probably won't even notice. Since James is saying absolutely nothing here that's any different from what's in that series, there is no need to discuss these interviews. I have already debunked every last thing these bozos are talking about in my four-part response earlier this year, so head over there if you missed those. Now let's check out his next move. This is where he finally acknowledges his pathetic debate performance. Put up and I will shut up. What could he mean? I am going to take down all the content on my YouTube channel where I've critiqued Origin of Life on one condition. The condition is this. I am going to name 10 key researchers that have published key papers in the area of Origin of Life and I'm going to give all 10 of you a chance to answer five essential questions that need to be answered for Origin of Life to be solved. That's right, he's going to take down all of his content, but only if one of the 10 top Origin of Life researchers can answer his questions. So who are these guys? Of course, it's the same people he's been whining about all along. This is an attempt to perpetuate his insane lie that only a dozen people work in this field. One of the precise lies I pressed him on in the debate, and all he did was soil himself. How about the dozen people thing? Is that what the dozen people to you? What I meant by that, the number of people that are doing the complex organic Sutherland counter type synthesis. This is exactly no. what Benner told you. No. Benner told you people that all it's over a very small. Told me. I have no, Benner told you on the, on the video that there's a, small, there's a small number of people that are still doing the Sutherland type of complex synthesis. He says most of the area Origin is not doing that. It's a boutique community. It's a small number of people. It's a dozen people. It was in That's reference to the, no. the number of people that are doing the no. complex Sutherland type the synthesis. The origin of life community. The origin of life community. You're talking about the field in general. What's even more pathetic than pretending these are the only people who should be able to answer these questions is is that he included Bruce Lipschitz, who is not an origin of life researcher. James knows he's not an origin of life researcher and has specified that in his content. That James would put Bruce on this list is a marvelous demonstration of how completely insane he has become and how little he cares about reality. But let's continue. What were those five questions again? Oh yeah, the five things he wrote on the chalkboard knowing that he was going to write clueless next to them no matter what happened. We don't know how to get polypeptides, polynucleotides, polysaccharides, specified information, and a cell. Of course, anyone with a functional brain who watched any of my content or the debate saw me present many different prebiotically plausible pathways to both polypeptides and polynucleotides. James just did a pathetic dance with an ultra-specific coupling that is totally irrelevant and then whined about nucleotide linkages. We were discussing studies that objectively produced polypeptides and polynucleotides by prebiotic means. He ignored all of it and wrote clueless for no reason. Then the polysaccharides, which were very plausibly made by enzymes, then specified information, which actually is not a thing, just creationist bullshit, and we never got to the cell. But of course, James doesn't like how dumb he looked in the debate, so he's here to pretend it never happened and just repeat the same script, like a flat earther. All the research I presented him with doesn't count because it came from dumb old Dave. The science is fake unless one of these 10 scientists watch his YouTube video and say to him exactly what I've been explaining in all of my content. He assigns judges and says they can email him or have someone film them drawing on the blackboard, a desperate attempt to reinforce his fantasy that science is only valid if written in chalk. Let's be perfectly clear. This is nothing but pageantry to try and rewrite what happened in the debate. James knows that these molecules have been made. He is perfectly aware of wet-dry cycling to produce polypeptides. He is perfectly aware of prebiotically plausible chemical activators that promote polypeptide formation in water. He is perfectly aware of polyribonucleotide formation on clay. He discusses papers in his own content that reference all of these processes. He uses those papers 
hours to whine about unrelated things, like homochirality or relay synthesis. But he knows this science has been done. There's only so many times this can be pointed out before it's just not worth discussing anymore. But James will never, ever drop this script, no matter how many times he is exposed, and no matter how badly, even right to his face. He knows polypeptides have been shown to form, even under prebiotic conditions in hot springs. So what does he do? It doesn't count unless it's specifically aspartic acid and lysine. We've already covered this, but once again, why those two, James? Polypeptides that don't have that specific linkage aren't actually polypeptides? The absurdity of this straw man is blatant to anyone who understands basic biochemistry. You could have 100 glycines in a row. Even if it doesn't serve any function, that's still a polypeptide, and many random sequences will have some function. There is no reason to presume early polypeptides needed this linkage, or even needed these two specific amino acids at all. Someone in the audience even told you this during the Q&A. And all of this ignores the research I presented, where coupling still occurred with reactive side chains present. It's a dumb stunt for his dumb viewers who have no clue what he's even saying. Same with the polynucleotides. He wants less than 2% of the two prime linkages, even though early RNA could have functioned just fine with lots of two prime linkages. This was another part of the debate where he was flailing because he knew there was a Shostak paper that dealt with this and he didn't want me to be able to talk about it, so he complained that I wasn't allowed to use the paper. It says functional RNA. I haven't seen that, that means paper. You're that bringing in other this. papers which we agreed you would not do. It's nothing but goalpost shifting to the nth degree as usual. Same with the polysaccharides. He pretends they have to form without enzymatic activity when it clearly only ever occurred via enzymatic activity. He knows that's the answer to the question, so to obfuscate this obvious fact, he shows enzymes that exist in life today and pretends no other enzyme could ever perform that function, just like he did in the debate. This is idiotic. Even short oligopeptides have been shown to have catalytic activity. Enzymes evolved by natural selection over time. Anything an enzyme does today, a more rudimentary enzyme could have done before, perhaps simply not as efficiently. Looking at enzymes present in extant life is a straw man, and he knows it. Specified information, once again, is not a real thing. Google it, you get nothing but creationist propaganda. Any real biologist would laugh in his face for even bringing it up. James spews the creationist script about how nucleic acids only have Shannon information, doesn't even explain what that means, and just shows a clip of him making some dumb analogy about a flash drive. Now I take this and I upload it to the cloud. So it goes through an RF wave to the, to the box on the wall, wherever that is, and, and it'll, it'll go into that box just through an RF wave. So that information's been here, it's been on a piece of paper, it's been on SRAM, it's, it's been on flash memory, now it's in an RF wave. Then when it hits that box, it goes down a wire, that information is going down a wire, it goes from server farm into another flash memory. The matter upon which it resides is secondary. The information is primary. Yes, functional information is required to get molecules capable of self-replication and other important functions. And guess what? There is lots of literature on this topic. Topic. James just has never bothered to look, probably because a lot of it is by his arch nemesis Jack Shostak. In this paper, Jack discusses research to determine what fraction of random sequences of a minimum length act as functional sequences, whether peptides or RNA. Admittedly quite low, about 1 in 100 billion, give or take a couple orders of magnitude, but that's still a far cry from the ridiculous numbers people like James cite, whining about how many particles in the 10 universes or whatever idiotic comparison they make to amaze their clueless viewers. Considering the astronomical numbers of molecules, it's a fraction that can be observed to form, and it has indeed been observed. Functional ribos Enzymes have been isolated from random RNA pools. There are many papers that talk about this. So when people like James or anyone at the DI talk about this, they just sound like idiots. They take something like an enzyme with 500 amino acids and say, hey, look, the odds of this specific sequence evolving are 1 in 20 to the 500 power. Unbelievable, because they are pretending that nature, for whatever reason, needed to get that exact sequence. 
It didn't. There are countless functional sequences. They are also assuming that all the amino acids were present and at equimolar concentrations coupling at the same rate. And they are also baselessly assuming that nature is somehow goal-oriented to get that precise function. It isn't. The sequences are random. When any functional sequence emerges by chance, it modifies its environment in some way, and this can affect the rate at which it proliferates, such that stochastic condensation events can slowly yield more more significant functionality within sets of molecules enclosed in vesicles and eventually a protocell. Systems chemistry. Enzymes clearly evolved slowly by evolutionary processes. James acts like nobody has thought about this before, but origin of life researchers have, and there is a mountain of literature about it. James is just too incompetent to understand it. And finally, the cell. Yes, it's complicated, but James just continues to hide from the entire field of systems chemistry, as I've pointed out countless times, since he knows that sets of molecules complexifying over time by natural selection dismantles his entire worldview. So we can all see what a joke this challenge is. It's James pretending the debate didn't happen and saying the same five dumb things to an empty room, because it went so horribly when he said it to me. But let's see what else he's been up to since then. Next, he publishes another dumb talk he gave with this ridiculous thumbnail. Is the scientific community corrupt? James is shouting his anti-science allegiance from a mountaintop, perfectly aligning himself with the propaganda Discovery Institute has been putting out lately, which we covered in a previous video. James knows who pays his bills. Next, he did this one. Not my question. He was probably told countless times by educated people that I answered his ridiculous questions in the debate, so he has to do some damage control to pretend that didn't happen, and that's this Q&A, which contains the art of yelling in the title. Boy, does he have a lot of spinning to do. Uh, I can certainly understand chemistry, and this is what I put before them. And I've certainly read enough about this. For years I've read about this topic, and I'm a chemist. I'm a PhD chemist, so... so I, uh, um, so I certainly can understand these things. If you say that I'm not an expert because I haven't published in this, no, I have published in this. I have several articles in this critiquing it. Yes, people tell him he's not an expert in this field, so he whines about how he's the smartest guy alive and should automatically understand all of it without lifting a finger. Geochemistry, astrochemistry, systems chemistry, James never learned about any of it, but he should be able to discredit all of it anyway. And of course, he continues to pretend he has published in this area, referring to his ridiculous blog posts, which obviously don't count. For me to jump into an area like this, Jack Sostek asked me to join them in this area. He, says, he said to me, Jim, if you, if you join us in this, we'll get this thing solved. James is pretending that Jack Shostak asked him to collaborate on origin of life research. Look at the level of fantasy he has reduced himself to. He is pretending that a Nobel Prize winning origin of life researcher that he has repeatedly slandered asked him to collaborate on research he doesn't understand because James will single-handedly get this thing solved. Does he have no clue how delusional he sounds? James, produce the email where Shostak said that, and I'll take all of my content down. Pathetic. Can you help start an official commission for truth in science directives to prevent fraud scams when scientists try to sell their hypotheses to the public for funding and profit? Well, can I... One of Tour's bootlickers wants James to be at the head of a committee to sniff out lies in the scientific literature. Oh, the irony. And he said, oh, and he started quoting these papers. Those papers had nothing to do with it. That's why I wanted him to come to the board, because when he comes to the board, he has to start with those two starting materials. And he's, starting with, he's not starting with those two starting materials. He wants to start with one and then, and then, and then this amino nitrile. Well, amino nitriles are precursors to amino acids. So by pretending this isn't valid starting material while amino acids are, just demonstrates that he doesn't even read this research. If only the authors wrote it in chalk so James could read it. Are amino nitriles the ones... Okay, yeah, uh, um, my, my producer told me say, stay passionate but friendly. Okay, I'll calm down. I, I, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about that.
His producer said, stay passionate but friendly. What that means is that his Discovery Institute handlers now have to constantly monitor him whenever he films anything to remind him to not look like a raving lunatic every time he opens his mouth because he was supposed to be their shining knight and now he's humiliating them. All right. Are amino nitriles the ones that Pounder uses prebiotically relevant? Yes, I think they are. Uh, um, uh, uh, I, I think they are. I mean, with... I mean, with some work, you can use prebiotic reagents to get them, but not with stereochem- not controlling stereochemical purity. Look at this. He now admits that the amino nitriles he was just whining about are indeed prebiotically relevant, so he just shifts the goalposts to the stereochemistry. It's unbelievable. When discussing stereochemistry, he defaults to, but how do you get the molecules? And when talking about getting the molecules, he defaults to, but the stereochemistry. I haven't introduced God into this at all. Why do you introduce God? This is not how we answer scientific questions. We don't introduce God into this. You know, uh, oh, I have to calm down. We don't introduce God into this. We're so nice. We don't introduce God. Please don't ask that. Yet again, James sees his producer off camera waving at him in hopes that he will stop looking like a complete maniac. So James does something else and looks even more insane. And again, James is supposed to be the lone rogue dissenter speaking truth to power. So who is this producer coaching him from the sidelines? Discovery Institute has dumped way too much money into this guy to let him manage himself. His insane behavior has become a liability for them. I did not like my performance. I think I got so hot, so frustrated. Not at the name calling. You know, people thought, oh, look at the names he's calling. The man was reading a script. He said all these things already in his videos. Go to his videos. You watch them. They're, it, 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 it's painful. That's right, folks. He was shouting like a toddler because I was reading from a script, not because I was exposing him as a lying fraud right to his face. Forget the fact that he read his own opening statement directly from a script. Forget the fact that nothing I said was from my videos but was written specifically for the debate. Forget the fact that there was no name-calling, as he claims. I simply referred to him as a liar because he objectively is one. James knows he came off as a complete lunatic, which eats him up inside every single day. And this is a total failure of an attempt to justify his disgusting behavior. And how can I explain in two minutes, one minute, how can I explain how wrong that is to a lay audience? But every synthetic chemist in there realized that that those were non-answers. Every synthetic chemist in the room knew I was giving wrong answers. Funny how none of them asked me a question to challenge me on the research I presented, but rather challenged you on all your lies and pageantry, huh? James wants so badly to pretend that scientists are on his side, but the only people in the room that were with him were the busload of his church pals in the three rows of reserved seats he filled to desperately try and stack the audience. Why are precisely zero scientists speaking up in your defense, James? If they all know I'm such a joke, why won't a single one appear on your channel and say so? If you start saying things that, that, that start contradicting the field, it's very hard to get funding because peers not only review your publications, they also review your grants. Oh, right. If they say that Dave is wrong, they'll lose all their funding. All institutions that bestow funding to scientists have a pro-Dave bias. Scientists know you are a joke, James. Deep down, you know it too. But just take a cell, deconstruct it. You have all the components now. You already have the DNA and the RNA in the precise sequence that you want. So you have the informational code. You have all the enzymes there. You have all the small molecules there, everything. You have all the lipids all the polysaccharides, now just put it back together. Now just put it back together. Boy, that'd be, a, that, that'd be a Nobel Prize. James will never give up this Frankenstein's monster approach to abiogenesis because it supports what he believes about life being divine magic. Taking a cell apart and putting it back together is indeed essentially impossible because that's not how abiogenesis happened in the first place, and absolutely nobody proposes as much. He wants scientists to do something nature never did in order to substantiate a natural process. 
Components didn't just float together and make life in an instant. Sets of molecules enclosed in vesicles complexified over time. Systems chemistry, as we've discussed ad nauseum in most of my content on this topic. Of course, James will never listen to me and will never lift a finger to learn one single thing about this field. He will just keep pretending it doesn't exist. Is there a way to force origin of life researchers to amend their public positions to ensure that invalid information is not generating falsehoods? Is there a way to force them? No. Somebody wants to force origin of life researchers to stop doing research that proves them wrong. And the DI are the ones whining about totalitarian science. Unreal. I think what I'm seeing, though, is I'm seeing that they're already being a little bit more conservative on their comments in their papers. So if you think that I haven't had an effect on them, I think you're wrong. As I see their more recent papers, they're qualifying themselves and they're being more careful because if, if they go hog wild on their claims, they know that, that I might call them out. James actually thinks that anyone who works in this field cares about what he says in his YouTube videos. It's adorable. Next, he references a long email he wrote to Stephen Benner. This is an, an email that I sent to him on January 29th, 2023 of this year. I said, Steve, I'll be doing a live stream on my YouTube channel tomorrow, Monday evening, 1.30, 2023. So January 30th, I didn't live stream. And I want to speak rightly about your data, so help me out to understand this. And I said, I'm, I'm confused about your work. And, uh, uh, and I said, I'm confused on a few things. And maybe if you can give me some clarity, I can speak with greater accuracy. You say that just the four pentoses were made in the C13 on Mars, which looks way more contaminated than that to me. But let me understand your claim. There was a filtration prior to the HPLC, as there must be a place out of the place out before the HPLC comes. And you sure you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you have a chance to come. It's not so you had an email dialogue. He and I have dialogued by emails, email many times. You know what his response to that was? Zero. No response. Why no response? Why no response? Because he's tired of holding your hand and understanding his research while you simultaneously talk shit about him on YouTube and accuse him of fraudulence. You even insult him in this very video. It was a bunch of trash. Everything the ma man made in there was trash. Why should he reply to you, James? He doesn't owe any of his time to an internet troll. If you're too clueless to understand his research, even after he explained it to you once, that's your problem. But James has to pretend there's something here, and that in his latest series, he wasn't just being a complete idiot. Benner washed the magnesium, while the basaltic glass contains magnesium. This is why he is rambling on and on forever about this. He hopes that a waterfall of technical jargon will just exhaust the viewer and they'll conclude that he said something to substantiate himself, though they have no idea what. And we've had dialogues. I've had lunch with Steve Benner, and I find him to be a pleasant man. I really do. Uh, we were at a conference in Israel a little over a year ago, and he spoke. And then the next day, I spoke, and I hit him pretty hard on the things that he said in his talk. And then the next day after that, he and I sat together and had lunch. And, and, and some people were walking, how can you two be sitting together having lunch? This is the way scientists are. And we had a good dialogue. And he even discussed about possibly writing a paper together with me. And, you know, that never happened. But this level of two-faced behavior is just unbelievable. James goes back and forth between calling Benner a fraud who makes trash and calling him a nice guy that he wants to write a paper with. Is he bipolar? No, I'm done responding to Dave's video. You know what I've learned? I learned that YouTubers poke me, hoping that I will respond, and it really ups their, their subscribers. When Dave first came against me, he had like 780,000 subscribers. Now he has like 2.6, 2.7 million. Now, many people, not, not just one or two, many people have told me that those are not real subscribers, that they think he paid some organizations in Asia that'll up your subscriber count because they figured out that his, his, they figured out this by many metrics. One is, is the amount of money that, that he makes. It's like 0.06 cents per subscriber, whereas other, other channels 
are making like 11 cents per subscriber or some, some, some crazy high number, or maybe, maybe it was, uh, uh, um, yes. Or, yeah. And, and I, I don't remember some, some factor of 10 or 50 higher than his, which would suggest that those are not real. And then the other thing is if you look at his, his, uh, um, his engagement, the engagement of his subscribers with that many, there's very little engagement. If he has 2.6 million, all I'm saying it's gone up heavily since he poked me. Okay, this is a whole new level of insanity. James is now trying to pretend not only that I made content on him to get more subscribers, but also that my subscriber count is fake. First, YouTube regularly purges bot accounts, so this is not a real thing that happens. Second, you don't make money on YouTube according to how many subscribers you have. It's about how many ads are watched. Third, I have a lot of subscribers because I make an enormous variety of academic content that students all over the world use to pass their classes every day. Remember the tutorials that his own students acknowledged by applause that they used to pass his class? I said he's clueless. I said he doesn't know chemistry. Although, again, who's used my content to pass his class? Anybody here? That's what I thought, James. He doesn't know chemistry, yet I'm helping your students. Isn't that interesting? Thank you. That's most of what I do on my channel, not just exposing loser frauds like James. In reality, James is the one who has had his subscriber count jump up as a result of responding to me. Look at socialblade.com. Two spikes, one in February 2021 and another in January of this year. Do those align with the two series he made attacking a prominent YouTuber that exposed his fraudulence? He just can't help but completely reverse reality at every single opportunity. If you could redo your interaction with the Origin of Life community, would you change anything? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I might not even do it. I might not even do it. I'm not, I'm not sure that it was worth it. Uh, it's, it's, I've been ostracized by, by not just the Origin of Life community. I've been ostracized by, by much broader than that. Um, I go into meetings sometimes and people will kind of look and, and they'll get hushed. You know, I go into to gatherings and, and like, you know, tour is here. This is the closest we will ever get to hearing James say something honest and truthful on this topic. He is admitting that he regrets ever opening his mouth because everyone in the scientific community now treats him like the lunatic he continually shows himself to be. With this remorse, any normal person would decide to keep their mouth shut from that point on. Yet he persists. His ego will not permit him to admit any error nor an ounce of fault. What is the systems chemistry and why do detractors say you need this to understand origin of life? It's a smokescreen. You have to understand every one of these components and systems chemistry makes it much harder for them. They dig their own grave when they say you have to understand systems chemistry because a cell is a system. It is several layers working on top of layers, working on top of layers. It's not independent little things. Systems chemistry means you have much more integration between each phase of this. How shocking. James continues to just flip out about systems chemistry while continuing to demonstrate that he doesn't even know what it is. Anyway, that's enough from the Q&A. We wrap things up with the latest pile of garbage. Academia tries to silence Professor with a thumbnail about the controversy James has unleashed. This is yet another pathetic interview where James continues to shout into the ether as though anyone he is lying about should care about him, fabricating a controversy to avoid confronting his own supreme irrelevance. Just another page out of the DI playbook. Remember, when no one will entertain your lies, cry censorship. Hey James, scientific journals can't censor you when you don't actually submit anything in the first place. Can you tell me essentially what 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 it is that you're doing uh and, and what is the research that you're doing around origin of life can you just give me like a broad overview of what it is and and most importantly because i know we're going to get into the weeds here um what is what is the significance of this what are the stakes the interviewer puts his profound cluelessness on display immediately with his very first question asking james to explain 
his research on the origin of life. You know, the thing he has never done because he doesn't work in that field and doesn't understand it at all. Funny how James whines about lay people thinking scientists have made a cell, but he doesn't point out the absurdity of lay people thinking that he's an origin of life researcher, huh? What I do is I critique origin of life research. He acknowledges that he's just a critic and then launches into the same old script. I don't think anybody else understands it when it's within the area of organic chemistry. If I can't understand it, and uh, I don't think anybody else can understand it. If it's organic chemistry, he should be able to understand it. And yet here we are two years later, and James still refuses to acknowledge that origin of life research is not mere organic chemistry. The man is hopeless. I have read the Bible meditatively, slowly, pensively, for 45 years every day. I'm saying every day for 45 years. I read it from Genesis chapter one, verse one, through Revelation chapter 22, and when I'm done, I start again. And, and uh, so that immediately is gonna cause a controversy. No, James, absolutely nobody cares that you read a Bible. People care about your anti-science propaganda. Maybe you should put down that Bible once a week and read up on systems chemistry instead, huh? So evolution, in a, in a very short sense, is going from <clears throat> simple to more complex. How shocking. His definition of evolution is completely wrong. There's no inherent drive towards complexity. Evolution often involves loss of function. Every time he opens his mouth about biology, he sounds like a complete moron. James, please pick up a high school biology textbook and learn something about this topic for once in your life. I see what everybody else sees. Mm -hmm. Every every other synthetic chemist, every other organic chemist sees every problem that I see. Mm -hmm. And when I point it out, even my colleagues who are not in this area, they'll, they'll see what I, I have to say. They go, yeah, are, are you the only one saying this? Are you the only one speaking up? And, and you say, well, why don't bunches of people speak up with me? Because they don't want to happen to them what's happened to me. Of course, all of Jim's imaginary friends always agree with him. Every smart scientist he talks to always confirms his script of lies. Funny how none of them will do it on camera, huh? At all levels in the university, from the administration all the way on to down to the undergraduates, is he or she is a creationist. And they'll label you with that, and that's the thing that they will dismiss you with. They're a creationist. Or they will say, yeah, he's speaking or she's speaking God of the gaps. You've never mentioned God. Yeah, creationism is an anti-science stance. You are a creationist, so people dismiss you. Sorry. And the endless whining about God of the gaps. You make hours of content pretending that it's impossible for life to arise by natural processes. We all know you believe God did it. God of the gaps. Get over yourself. The rest of this is just the same old crap. Molecules degrade so fast, primordial soup model, no Nobel prizes, no progress since Miller-Urey, and so forth. We've talked about all of this. The guy will never ever change one sentence in this script of lies. There's almost no point in continuing to acknowledge him. He's a broken record, so these debunks become a broken record too, since all of this was debunked in my earlier content, and he just ignores it. Instead of accepting fault, he just keeps slamming his head into a brick wall, and then whines about sense censorship and controversy when he's ignored. That's something you're really up against also. Yeah, I'm up against consensus. I'm up against consensus in science. And, and I'll tell you, Brandon, there are so many chemists that see exactly what I see. Mm -hmm. But the ramifications of coming out ag against this and, 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 and butting against consensus are that you could lose your funding? Yes, James is being silenced because he goes against consensus. Apart from the obvious fact that there is no consensus regarding abiogenesis, this is the singular tactic that unites all of the propaganda from the DI. You can tell he is getting this script directly from Meyer and West because he is now even echoing their propaganda about the pandemic. The distrust is not just over the last 20 years, it's over the last like three years. Mm. What we were told by, by the experts concerning COVID is, is, uh, is really alarming, really alarming. 
and the things that they told us and the things that, that, that we were instructed from the so-called experts was, it, it's just sad. It's just sad. And so, yeah, the, the, the academy, academia, the scientific establishment has lost a lot of street credibility over the last three years, almost to the point where people are like, wow, if the scientists say it, maybe it's then not true. Maybe it's therefore not true. Uh, uh, and, and so much of the cover up. Here's another bit where he pretends that students have told him that an education in the sciences tried to pull them away from God. So what, what's happened is a lot of people who watch that on my YouTube channel who were really drawn away from God because of claims that science made throughout their educational experience, throughout high school and college. They were drawn away from God because they felt science was teaching away from God. Does that sound familiar? Remember this DI email about the imaginary student and the godless professors? What more do you need to see in order to know that James is just another mouthpiece for Discovery Institute? This is the story they are relentlessly weaving to get people to reject science. And James vomits the whole thing verbatim. It's not the outlier shouting like a maniac who is wrong. It's the entire scientific community who's wrong because Jesus. Speaking of shouting like a maniac, James is very quick to admit that he was totally out of line in the debate. But what is this ridiculous story about how he posted the debate even though he wasn't proud of it? You know, like I was in a recent debate and the way I, I lost my cool is, is I'm not at all proud of that. But nonetheless, I posted the video. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm not proud of it, I posted the video. He live streamed the damn thing. People were watching him act like a buffoon on his YouTube channel in real time. It was posted to his channel before we left that room. Why would he lie about something so trivial? Not that any of his clueless fans are watching this video, but why would you listen to James tell this unbelievably transparent lie and then trust anything else he says? He's so depraved he even pretends to not know what a theory is. So science and their theories change all the time. So what I try to get scientists to do is say, wait, wait, wait a minute. Is that a fact or is that a theory? Is that a fact or is that a theory? He is a scientist spewing the just a theory script. He's a scientist pretending not to know what science is or how it works. My friends, everything we are now witnessing from this broken shell of a man is delusional narcissism at its finest. I'm not being facetious in the slightest. James, for sure, has narcissistic personality disorder. Look at this description. James has an inflated sense of his own importance, as though people should recognize him as an expert in a field he is actually clueless about. He is easily upset by the slightest criticism, like when he responded to my first very soft video about him with a 14-part series about how dumb I am. He gets angry when he's not given the attention and admiration he thinks he deserves for slandering prominent researchers in this field just because their work infringes on his infantile worldview. And then he wonders why they don't reply to his emails. And this occurs mainly in men, with the onset in the teenage or early adulthood years, which for James aligns with the psychotic break he had in college over his untreated pornography addiction, in which he hallucinated and convinced himself that he saw Jesus in his dorm room. This description was written for James Tour, and the outbursts he is now famous for demonstrate what happens when you hold a mirror up to the face of a delusional narcissist who is desperately hiding from his true identity. Nobody who works in Origin of Life research so much as thinks about him or gives two shits about what he says. This epic drama is playing out in his mind alone. That James thinks anyone in this field should feel obligated to engage him is as delusional as flat earthers thinking that eminent physicists and geologists should be debating them about the shape of the earth. Flat earthers make up lies, those lies get debunked right to their face, and they just keep spewing those same lies. James is no different. James, I know that you're well aware of everything I'm saying here, but I want you to look right into my eyes as I reiterate this for you. Nobody who matters cares about your challenge. Remember this excellent and most poignant moment from the debate Q&A? My question is, why aren't you publishing your critiques in reputable journals? Why are you... 
All right. Why are you denying the scientific community the benefit of your expertise? Why are you limiting your critiques um, to Discovery Institute publications and YouTube that the researchers you're talking about don't look at? I am not trying to reach the origin of life researchers. I am trying to reach the masses. I am going after the people that do not read the scientific literature. The translation of this is, I can't this publish medium. my critiques because they're full of lies, so I'll lie to the public instead. We With this pathetic YouTube challenge, you are just continuing to demonstrate that you're nothing but a clueless preacher. Scientists read primary scientific literature. If you want to challenge them, you have to publish your critiques in a reputable journal. But you know as well as I do that you're not even really talking to them. You're performing for your congregation. They're all you've got. You know for a fact that nobody will respond, so you can claim victory without having actually done anything. It's just a prolonged attempt to cling to your own self-proclaimed relevance with the brainwashed people who have no clue what the primary literature says and don't care. Among your peers, you're a complete buffoon. You said it yourself. Everywhere you go in scientific circles, when you enter the room, people snicker and laugh at you behind your back. Never forget, you did this to yourself. You could have kept your delusions private, but no. Your narcissism convinced you to make that first 14-part series. When I demolished it for over a million eyeballs and made things even worse for you, it was your narcissism that stirred you to action again, to make yet another series that was even more ridiculous. And it was your narcissism that stirred you to behave the way that you did in that debate. Everyone but your brainwashed flock knows exactly what a joke you are and it's your own fault. So anyway, that's currently how deep the hole is that James Tour has dug for himself. After this 60-day challenge has elapsed and the scientific community continues to ignore him, he'll probably dig himself a little deeper. So let's all look forward to that. I'll see you next time.